to do she good and she great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, a few years ago, the Honeywells and the Gardeners went down to Death Valley. It was a wet year. I thought it must have been five, six, seven years ago to see the flowers. And while we were down there, we had an incident, uh, which I wrote a poem about. Uh, you have to, uh, to appreciate the poem. You have to understand what goes on now when it comes to chick sales. You know what chick sales are? Outhouses. When it comes to the modern outhouse, in the, down in Death Valley, and they don't dig a hole and put a little house over it anymore. These are all self-contained, like we have around here, and they bring them in on a truck and set them on the ground, and a week later they come in with new ones and take the used ones out. So that's important for you to understand in this, in this, in this poem, which I call Grandma and the, the Death Valley Outhouse. <laughs> now the wind was blowing gentle when Grandma got the call. There weren't no indoor plumbing, just an outhouse, that was all. A potty for the tourists, but it would have to do. There was worse spots in the desert, and Grandma's seen a few. Well, our lady showed her breed when she took her place in line. There were others there for her. Her spot was number nine. And the wind was up to 30 when Grandma got to first. It had been a long wait, but she'd survived the worst. And the wind was up to 40 when Grandma stood within, where it was warm and perfumed, but outside there rose a din. And the wind was blowing 50 when she felt a little slide. Her palace, it was moving. She was going for a ride. <laughs> and the gale was really howling when there come a shudder and a thump and a little bit of sloshing as that outhouse hit a bump. Well, that was too much for Grandma. She'd done what we'd have done. And she pulled herself together, left that outhouse on the rug. She headed for some sagebrush, the only shelter she could find. But by golly, here come that outhouse, as if it had a mind. So she veered off toward the car park. She was straining for the lead. Grandma's built for comfort. She isn't built for speed. She must have set a record, but no one had a clock. Still that outhouse would have caught her if it hadn't hit a rock. It tumbled over on its side, and a pungent smell arose. And someone there who'd seen it said, it's Grandma, by a nose. <laughs> Cowboy poetry. I guess when you write any poetry, it's, you're looking for inspirations, and they're not so easy to come by. Theme, something you can write a poem about. You know, you use up the good ideas. Get, they get used up really fast. and. Then you're sitting there wondering, you know, it's not really writer's block, but you're just wondering what, what, what you can come up with. And a few years ago, uh, I lucked out. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, AARP. Uh, so, how, how many of you belong to ARP? Let's see some hands. Oh, there's a bunch of liars out here. <laughs> in, in their magazine, uh, on the correspondence page, this particular issue had a little box. It was the fall of the year. They said, write in and tell us everything you know about autumn leaves. And I thought, well, now there's a topic. I could write a poem about autumn leaves. That's a good idea. So I sat down and I wrote this little verse. I titled it, Everything I Know About Autumn Leaves. And it goes like this. Each year, winter comes, autumn leaves. 